Hello and welcome to the Aero-V engine assembly video series. I'm Joe Norris at Sonics Aircraft LLC. In this series of video segments, we are going to walk through the assembly of an Aero-V engine. We will be following the sequence called out in the Aero-V assembly manual. The manuals get updated much more often than the video series. So if there is a case where the manual and the video series disagree, your manual that came with your engine is the guide for you to follow. But in general, all of the steps that we have in the manual will be shown in the video series. We hope you enjoy the video series. We hope you enjoy putting together your Aero-V engine. And we look forward to seeing your airplane flying. Next, we're going to temporarily install our rocker shaft with a pushrod measuring tool so that we can find out what length pushrods we need for this particular uh, head. The tool we use is an adjustable pushrod. It has a uh, adjustable end on it here that we'll be able to lengthen or shorten this pushrod tool to find the exact measurement that we need to uh, trim our pushrods so that they exactly fit this head installation that we have here. So I'm going to Slide the pushrod tube tool into a pushrod tube until it seats in the lifter. You just kind of go that by feel. What I've already done and what you'll need to do is turn your crankshaft to make sure that the pushrod, uh, the lifter is all fully retracted uh, as low as it will go because that's the measurement we need to take. Uh, basically the valve closed, the lifter fully retracted so that we know what the, the distance is. We'll install our rocker shaft again temporarily, making sure to engage the pushrod tool into the cup of the rocker arm for the valve that we are going to measure. Once we have our rocker shaft pushed into place with the pushrod tube engaged in the cup on the end of the rocker arm, we can reinstall our fasteners. We'll torque those again to 14 pound feet to make sure that the rocker shaft is fully seated. Now I'm going to reach in here and I'm going to gradually turn that pushrod tool until my rocker arm just contacts the valve head. Now I've set this adjuster here so that I've had about a turn and a half to two turns of length away from being fully retracted. So you turn it counterclockwise all the way till it stops and then give it about a turn and a half to two turns to give yourself some adjustment. Once you get that set, then you can reach under here, turn the push rod adjusting tool until this contacts the valve with the tool uh, fully seated in both the rocker arm and the lifter. Now I have my push rod adjusted the way I want. My valve is just barely contacting with the push rod fully seated in both the lifter and the rocker arm cup. So we know that that length is set. What I'm going to do now is remove this rocker arm shaft without disturbing the adjustment of that push rod uh, adjusting tool. Here's our adjusting tool set to the length that we need. We haven't changed that. Our job now is to take our push rods, compare them to the length, and we'll trim them off so that the length of the push rod, including the ball end, will be the same length as our push rod uh, measuring tool. We trim these uh, again with an abrasive cutter 
And uh, in order to press the end in, you may have to uh, heat this up. I would heat it with a, a heat gun uh, rather than a torch. You just want to expand it a little bit. Sometimes these will press in without heat. Uh, often you have to just warm that push rod up a little bit to get that end to press in. So you're going to uh, compare the length of this bare push rod to the adjusting tool. Uh, calculate in the length of the uh, ball end that you'll press in and then trim the push rod to the proper length. That'll be the same length for all four of the push rods on this side for this head. You don't need to check the four of them individually, but you should check the other head on the other side. It may be slightly different, so you may end up trimming the push rods on one side of your engine a slightly different length than the push rods on the other side. A lot of times they'll be really close. Sometimes there'll be a, a minor difference. So you should check this side, get those trimmed and fitted, and then check the other side. We've trimmed our push rods and we're ready to install the rocker shaft. I've turned the crankshaft until all the lifters on this side are fully retracted so all the push rods are in as far as they'll go towards the engine block which will facilitate putting the uh, rocker shaft on uh, without having to uh, fight the spring pressure of the valve springs. Before we put the rocker shaft on, we're going to want to put some lithium grease uh, or your favorite engine assembly lube on each end of the push rods, each one, so that those are good and lubed up. I'll slide them in there. We've lubricated our push rods, we've put them back in place, making sure that uh, you can feel that they're all the way down engaged in the uh, cups and the lifters. Now that our push rods are trimmed, we're ready to install our rocker shaft. I've turned my crankshaft to my engine so that all of the lifters are at the bottom of their travel on this side of the engine so that we won't have any interference with installing our rocker shaft. I've also backed off the adjusters on the rocker arms themselves so that they're uh, retracted as far as they'll go so that we uh, have plenty of clearance make it easier for us to put our rocker shaft on. What we're going to do is we're going to install the rocker shaft on the studs. We'll have to take some time to align the push rods and make sure that they are sitting in the cups in the rocker uh, shaft and the rocker arms and then we'll uh, do the final torquing of the fasteners. There, our shaft is installed. We're ready to install the fasteners. A later step will be to adjust the valve clearance with our feeler gauge so we have the proper valve clearance. But for now, we're just going to install these fasteners, torque them to 14 pound feet. and we're ready to move on to our next operation.